Greetings. The following presentation it is a case analysis for a legal, ethical, and social values business course. This week's presentation is based on the ethical and moral dilemma that Cynthia Cooper confronted while undercovering Wellcome's corrupt accounting practices. She revealed the greatest accounting fraud and the largest bankruptcy case in the United States history. The assessment has the intention to provide Cooper a series of recommendations based on trust, ethical and moral philosophical approaches from Immanuel Kant, George G. Bankert, and Cicela Buck. Additionally, a brief appraisal on the Savings Oxley Act. Recommendations to Cynthia Cooper. After discussing the suspicion of untrustful account practices, my first recommendation is to act rationally and consequently to the circumstances. We must understand that we are not dealing just with numbers. The fact that company financial statements deviate from reality in this magnitude will have a significant negative impact on thousands of people's lives. In my opinion, we choose, if we choose to lie to ourselves and we do not disclose these bookkeeping findings, we will we remember as a corporate cowards who had chosen to align ourselves to wrongdoing and to what is evil. If we choose not to act and to keep silent, the greatness of the scandal that is about to be revealed will mark every single working member of the organization. It doesn't matter what role they play. Each member will be remembered as a liar, as a conspirator, a person with bad moral who trusts leaders without a sense of integrity. I do consider that our ethical duties must align with the ideology and perceptions of Immanuel Kant. An ethical person is that who acts with the right intentions. Kant's fundamental principle about morality is the categorical imperative that describes that our actions should always follow despite our natural desires or inclination an essential set of norms. The first statement communicates that we should only act in maxims that can be accepted as a universal law of nature. My second recommendation will be to analyze my moral choices. According to Cicela Buck and her concept from the individual moral choice, a professional responsibility for manager is to critically examine and carefully test as many possible angles before we make decisions. It limits errors and bias. A decision should be made object objectively. We must act ourselves in the decision is impartial and just for all involved or impacted by our resolution. In my opinion, every decision we should, we should start by considering if it starts against the best practices. Thus my decision is using my employees or subordinates as a mean and not as an end. Thus my decision is against the laws regulations. Do I feel proud of my decision? Would I feel comfortable with my decision if it appears in the media or in the news? During many years, Cynthia Cooper had built a trust relationship with the organization, as she has demonstrated true passion and loyalty to this company and no one can doubt of her commitment to a, the better of the corporation or its employees. There's no real intention to damage the image or the reputation of Welcome or any of its members. There is no satisfaction for being a whistleblower. No, nevertheless, a great sense of responsibility is required to stop the wrongdoing. Consequently, my third recommendation is to analyze if the organization as a whole is acting ethically or morally. In my opinion, following the guidelines in regards to trust and morality toward business practices from George G. Rankert. His ideas contributed to a broader appraisal considering the organization does follow good practices. According to Rankert Trust, within the business organization can be categorized into three different forms. 
basic, parted, and extended trust. The first two forms are essential as they support the social, economic, and moral systems inside the business. Otherwise, without these trust forms, the system will collapse. The extended trust comes that describes the requirements for the organization as if individuals to trust each other past the basic and guarded forms of trust. Rankert describes the basic trust to other members of the organization to think they would not take advantage of certain circumstances. Hence, the principle of which all members will act toward others. However, this is not the case. The case study describes how Bernard Everts and other welcome top managers did not follow this kind of trust, principally as they were hiding the failing probability to inflate the net income of the organization and reported the business cash flow expenses of the investment. Worldcom CEO and CFO intentionally authorized several transactions of millions of dollars to cover expenditures. By capitalizing on their expenses, the company projected profits around $4 billion instead of almost $2 billion in net losses. Concerning guarded trust, people trust others not to exploit areas of unclarity. The case study explains that Cynthia Cooper requested the audit service for former accounting company Arthur Anderson. Essential data regarding a specific unclear transactions for her internal auditing process. The company responded negatively as they denied the access to the information expressing that she was not authorized to review it. The company started that they respond to the CFO Scott Sullivan. Additionally, Cooper had advice to stop insisting on requesting information. As a direct consequence, trust will, be, will not happen because the company does not comply with the accounting rules. Moreover, when it comes to extend trust, this kind cannot be achieved because the first two forms of trust were never met. Subsequently, we can reason that welcome business practices are dishonorable and unethical because they do not meet this kind of trust. Lastly, I will not provide a recommendation to Cynthia Cooper. Instead, I will stand next to her and confront the dilemma. Keeping the secret, as Khan describes, is treacherous alley. As the rightful and trustful managers, we must add consequently to with our responsibilities and emphasize of the well-being of the whole. In my opinion, being criticized and entitled as a whistleblower is better rather than being entitled as a liar and a thief. The consequences of um, Cooper's acts generated the, the Sabine's Oxley Act, as well as other uh, cases such as Enron. The Sabine's Oxley Act mandates a number of improvements, a firmer record-keeping requirement which enhances the disclosure of financial statements. The objective is to prevent corporate accounting fraud. The ad, the ad creates a new set of rules which makes personally responsible accountants, auditors, and corporate officers for the accuracy of the company in financial statements. It creates a higher criminal penalties for violating the laws. Due to these extensive requirements and implementations, compliance with, with SOX results in significantly costly. As a consequence, hundreds of public companies have chosen their shares no longer to the major stock markets and have migrated to alternative stock markets where they can avoid cost of compliance. To maximize the long-term value of the company is a priority. Therefore, seeking alternatives to avoid liabilities it is fundamental for the success of the organization. The fact no regulation obligates the United States companies to perform under SOX it is essential. This act may prevent frauds and create severe punishment for those who break the law. However, it is not a personal resolution or will prevent future scandals due to financial malpractices.